Going to the fact that in the interview they will ask you which is your Canadian experience, you may say, no, I have not been working, but I have two and a half years of experience as packaging engineer. I have been working for this company that sometimes is similar to a company that is here in Canada. And you have to show up that you have all the skills that you are presenting in your resume, resume and that it works. I mean, um, they know that you don't have the Canadian experience, but if you are in that interview, it's because you are the best in a number of candidates, so don't feel bad about that. Just work out and show that you want to work in that company. You must know by heart what are they doing, what are their goals, what are the targets of the company. No hesitation. If you don't have the Canadian experience, well, big deal. Uh, this, co uh, this country is made for we are all immigrants, so I don't see that like uh, the bigger problem here. So don't be discouraged that if you don't have Canadian experience, if you are looking for big corporate uh, or big position, maybe that's right, that's the case. But uh, small businesses, many uh, small to medium sized companies, they are looking for people who have your expertise. So don't be discouraged. And I absolutely disagree that if you don't have Canadian experience, and I'm telling you what makes it um, important because not having Canadian experience, it's not in terms of technical expertise, it's just a matter of cultural, the uh, workplace culture that matters to the employer. 90% of employers who have been asked, are you happy with your uh, newcomer's expertise, they said, we are happy with their, ex their technical expertise, but what matters to them is the uh, culture. So try to get that culture as soon as you can, and I guarantee that everybody can find what they have done in their country here. And this, is, this country is very positive. The industry is not as big as many countries, so the networking will help you to get the job that you have done before. Don't be afraid that not having Canadian experience will stop you. I personally didn't have that experience, and I don't agree that it will stop everybody from finding their job. So, uh, face to this kind of question, the most important thing is to show them your enthusiasm in your, in your discipline and also your soft skills. To show them that you are someone who, are, who is willing to learn, who is easy to work with, and, all, uh, and uh, ha, ha, has always uh, positive personalities. And uh, I've, uh, I've been working just uh, for three weeks and uh, what, I, uh, what I find in my work is that there is nothing that I, uh, we cannot do without Canadian experience. Uh, all the technical skills are trainable. So just to, uh, to show the, uh, to the employer that you have the personality to accomplish that. If you don't have Canadian experience, make yourself your Canadian experience. Volunteer. Uh, study how Canada work in an interview. Uh, try to put again passion in whatever you did uh, in your non-Canadian experience. It's technically the same. What I saw back home and one seeing now in a high-tech job is technically the same. You just have to prove them that you are doing. It. And again, I didn't have to volunteer, but my wife have to, and she's working in Mount Sinai Hospital now, research. Everybody said, oh, great job. No, we've been, she's been six months volunteering. I was working in a factory. So we've been struggling. We invest in our future. Invest in your future. Do it. Sacrifice, sacrifice is always something that is give you right. Don't, don't sit to wait that job's coming to you. Be proactive, be aggressive, study, and don't lose your time, don't waste your time. So I would suggest that work on your skills and there is absolutely no problem with uh, coming from uh, other countries and finding jobs here because uh, immigrants are more flexible with the uh, uh, salary packages, with contractual works, so it's much better for them to employ newcomers. Uh, honestly, I arrived one year ago, I didn't have any Canadian experience. Um, um, my English was not bad. I think that's important to be understood, to understand also what the people uh, are talking about. If you, if you think you're short in English, then take courses. 
Uh, there is tons of free courses in Toronto. I found it a great city to come and immigrate because there is a lot of help from for free and it's amazing. So uh, take advantage of that. And also, um, I would say 50% of my team is non-Canadian and are immigrants from all over the world. So, and we are a good team. I mean, we work together. We don't have the same culture. I'm working with Chinese people. I'm working with uh, people from Middle East, Canadians, and I mean, as soon as you are professional, and as uh, it has been said, you understand uh, how the Canadian spirit is working. It's not, it's not easy, but <laughs> but you will, and then you you will be fine as soon as you're professional and you're willing to make some efforts. So, thank you. That in that case, even I got the job. So then. Then uh, my point is, expertise is one, is one thing, and Canadian experience is another thing, right? But I really uh, am more um, a side of the Canadian experience as uh, something about the country, something about the people, something about the Canada, not 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 only about technical expertise. Technical expertise is completely different. Technical expertise is all all, all of you you have technical expertise, right? Okay. Thank you. What they wanted to know first is, do you like the job? If, if you like the job, we are okay with that. How do you fit with people in the company? If you fit well, it's okay. Experience, it will come. We, we know we are, we are, you are a new graduate, you don't have experience, but we will train you. This is what they say to me. And the first Two, two months, uh, I've been doing uh, only uh, card design. I'm working with AutoCAD. And this is a good opportunity to show what you can do. Because by doing this card uh, design, drawing, you have you have opportunity to talk with uh, engineers, with designers, and you can input some idea. So after two months, they start realizing that this guy is not only good for card uh, drawings, but it's good for engineering uh, job. So you don't need like to have Canadian experience. What you need to do is to show the employer that you want to do the job. Doesn't matter if your English is bad because my English is very horrible at school at 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 uh, at at, um, at my work. And the first month I have to repeat every time, every time, every time. Now it's fine because they get familiar with my accent. I get familiar with the way they talk and. Uh, yesterday, um, one of my colleagues interviewed uh, one candidate, and so on the resume it was perfect. The guy has all the skills and everything. And then um, they asked him um, basically what was his uh, biggest achievement. And the guy was, oh well, I don't know. And it took like a couple of minutes to think about what he think it was exciting is this previous job. So. It didn't took long for my colleagues to realize that that guy wasn't excited by his job and was not thrilled by you know, his previous experience. So I think they felt that and they decided not to hire him because uh, what they lo were looking for was somebody who were really enthusiastic about the position. So I think you really need to transmit your feelings about the, the position. You're not going just to earn money. You're also going to spend... You want to... You want to enjoy your job, right? So you want you, you want to demonstrate that you're gonna be a good colleague and you're gonna work uh, as best as possible because you like it. That's my only advice: be enthusiastic. And uh, I know that there there are many uh, senior engineers sitting here who are supervisor in their home country, and they had their staff who did that. Uh, AutoCAD work for them, but here it's really a very important skill. When uh, during the interview, uh, when employer asks uh, if you use AutoCAD, if you say no, I've never used that, but I have 15 years experience in civil engineering, that doesn't make sense for the two of them. <laughs> And uh, if you are a supervisor and you know how to 
uh, use AutoCAD to make modification on your drawings. And for employer, that means that they can economize uh, technician for AutoCAD for you. I work for a consulting company, so we do a lot of uh, building, commercial building uh, design. So we work with civil engineers, we work, we work for mechani with uh, mechanical engineers, with architects, and the first main of way of communication is AutoCAD, because all these consultants use AutoCAD. And when I call my supervisor for the job, the first question he asked me is, do you know AutoCAD? And at school, we don't really learn. We, we, you have a base, base AutoCAD when you are at engineering school. But after school, I, I learned uh, AutoCAD for two, two months full time. And that was the first question they asked me. In my office, from the CAD designer for, to the uh, executive vice president, everyone had AutoCAD in his uh, computer. We have some other uh, software, but AutoCAD is, is on every computer on my, on, on my office. Sorry, for chemical engineers or other engineers, uh, almost a must out of cut in this moment. It's, uh, it's something that you, if you want to change a pipe design system, you're not going to pay anybody to do it. People expect you to change the drawing, uh, like a PDID in the system. Uh, you know, have it. Um, I don't know if somebody here wants to work in the pharmaceutical or, or uh, cosmetics industry. Uh, if somebody wants to do that, you must have a, you should have a, a GMP training. So if somebody wants to work in that industry or not, uh, it's a good idea. I did it. I I, I paid a course before starting to have GMP, and that was a, a door open. Hey, I want to ask uh, Julia. Yeah. Uh, do you uh, find that uh, it's difficult to design? Uh, if you don't have uh, designation, professional designation? I don't have any professional de designation because you have to, uh, as a new, uh, new graduate, you have to work for at least four years before you get your de designation. But you, you, you can work under cover of an engineer, but you don't really need uh, any designation. You can't, uh, because of some regulation in Canada, you can't call yourself engineer because of professional engineers on Ontario or something. But uh, that doesn't mean that you can't do engineering job. So everybody, uh, not only 7% of people who are doing engineering job in Ontario are PNG. So many companies uh, even don't want to have more than one or two PNG, don't want to pay that bill, but they are doing engineering jobs. So this is a absolutely confusion. So don't uh, put something negative in your mind that because you don't have PNG or you are not a, you are not called an engineer, so you can't do engineering job. You can't call yourself as engineer, but you can do engineering job. When I arrived in Canada, I didn't know anybody in Canada. So, but I found my job through connection, but I found the connection myself. So that's true. I did networking. I did a lot of volunteering job. First time that I started with Michelle, I researched the companies and uh, the first company that Michelle called, they were surprised to see a resume that matches to their expertise. So they called me for an interview. So that's your job to find the connection and find the people that, you know, you know, get surprised by seeing your resume. I, I started in late and some days, I, you know, job search here in Canada for newcomer, it's not an easy job. Some days you are down, some days up, you are someday waking up energetic and some days absolutely you don't want to do anything. But I thought, why I sit at home sending out resume without any feedback and I done, today I'm done. So I go out, talk to the people, see people and you know, join to LinkedIn. I found the companies, I you know, researched people through LinkedIn, where are you working, what software are you, you know, using in your company, so I want, I'm interested in your company, can you give me some names, can you give me some information. I, you know, 360 people in my LinkedIn, I found and searched one by one by myself. So right now I have 660 people in my related engineers connection in my LinkedIn, but I found one by one by myself. I didn't know anybody when I arrived in Canada. 
Uh, hi to everyone. Uh, 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 it's better to apply the, the company that's outside the Toronto or uh, inside the Toronto. It's because some companies have branches in uh, outside the GTA. Uh, what do you think? It's, uh, it's uh, the same chance or it's better to apply for the, uh, the company that's out of the GTA? Everything. Don't limit yourself. Uh, I have a friend who is, he doesn't drive, he lives in Pickering and he worked with me almost in, in the last part of Mississauga and the guy is, is traveling three hours, he's complaining I said, buddy, you just came six months ago, do your work don't, he had the opportunity, right, to work in the company now so don't limit yourself, right, why are you going to limit to your 10, meter, 10 kilometers area from your work so don't, I don't know don't, don't limit yourself. You okay. never know where it's going to be the chance. So, uh, when I first arrived, um, I followed the Engineering Your Future program with Natalie. Uh, and uh, after I was, uh, I decided to continue with mentoring. And uh, I met my mentor, who was um, um, a guy, which it was a retreated, I think. Do you say retreat? Uh, retired. Retired? Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Actually, you know, he's got his own business. Oh, uh, yeah, but so, okay. Yeah. So, because he was retired, he knew a lot of people in his field. He was also the president of the um, Clinical Engineering Society. So, you know, he, he has a lot of contact. And uh, uh, we met like once a week in a coffee around here, French coffee. Uh, Pain perdu, maybe you've heard of it. <laughs> and so during this meeting, basically, I was uh, reviewing my resume with him. He gave me a lot of insight of my resume. And also, I realized that I didn't know exactly the field because I was kind of junior. I, have, I graduated two years ago, so I didn't really know the field. And this guy was in the business for 20, 30 years. So I asked him like very stupid questions. And I was not afraid of, you know, asking about all the, the doubts I had about this job and all the field and everything and he answered and it was very valuable and I know they, in, in this um, organization they ask you to do some informational interview and I would really encourage you to do that. I, I did lots of informational interviews so you think you're going f and just asking questions, you're not going to have a job but it's very valuable question because when you actually have a real interview, this question can be asked. 